Coming up on the Sports News, we are going to talk some Wanakee High School football. Also, Supreme Hits Boxing is going to be here and a lot more. we got a jam-packed show. Stick around, but first, the headlines are next. They're powered by the Red Zone over on Regent Street and Conan Automotive in Stoughton. It's the Sports News coming up right now on Channel 57 Sports. Welcome to the Sports News, your 30-minute look into the tackles, hits, checks, and dunks that make up the local sports scene. I'm your host, Rich Reynolds, and let's hit the ground running. After a long off-season, we were able to kick off the 2016 high school football season on Friday night, a game that we had for you right here on Channel 57. Saw the Middleton Cardinals get an early hold on the Big 8 Conference with a 31-3 win over shorthanded Madison Memorial. The Spartans were without their standout two-way player, Jake Ferguson, while Middleton came in with a roster complete with UW recruit Caden Lyles. Lyles listed at 6'3", 320, paved the way for a power running game that racked up 234 yards, despite the game being called because of lightning with nine minutes still remaining. This week, our A1 Furniture and Mattress High School Bowl Series will bring you the Badger Bowl as powerhouses Monona Grove and Wanakee square off. By the way, it should be a good one as Monona Grove was a 20 to nothing winner in week one over Reedsburg, while Wanakee cruised to a 30 to 13 win over Oregon. Well, in the wake of all the Ryan Lochte controversies this past week, there was still some gold to be handed out in Rio. For the first time ever, the U.S. brought home a gold medal in women's triathlon and it went to former Wisconsin Badger athlete Gwen Jorgensen. Jorgensen was hobbled in London four years ago, but bounced back by crossing the finish line in one hour, 56 minutes and 16 seconds. Olympic triathlon is comprised of a one and a half kilometer swim, followed by a 40 kilometer bike and finished with a 10 kilometer run. By the way, none of which I did this morning. Well, this year's Northwoods League playoffs were over quickly for the Madison Mallards, but success finally found the Wisconsin Rapids Rafters. After not being able to break 500 in their first six years of existence, the Rafters finished this season at 53-23 and while going undefeated in the playoffs en route to sweeping the Eau Claire Express in the Summer Collegiate World Series. The championship is the third in the last four years for Big Top Baseball, which owns the Mallards, Rafters, the Kenosha Kingfish, and the Green Bay Bullfrogs. And after reaching a plea agreement to serve eight years for drugging and raping women in four states, former Green Bay Packers safety Darren Sharper was back in court last week, and a federal judge tacked on an additional 10 years to Sharper's sentence. Problems aren't ending there for Sharper, as he still has charges pending on a state level. Sharper played for 14 seasons in the NFL and was working as an analyst at the NFL Network when charges were made against him in 2013. For more information and all the 411 on our headlines, check out these fine websites. Stick around, we're going to talk some baseball, Olympic gymnastics, as Jordan's going to be stopping by, Wanakee, prep sports, boxing with supreme hits, all of that and more next on the Sports News here on Channel 57 Sports. Well, the start of the high school football season already upon us. And hey, on Friday night, we are going to be out at Wanakee. Big game in the Badger Conference as Wanakee Warriors are going to be hosting Monona Grove. We've got a couple Warrior players here. How apropos as we bring in Blake Smith back and Tyler Mays who are joining us. And fellas, thanks for being on the show. And I got to ask you, now that the football season is here, game one is under your belt. How excited are you guys for this, this rest of the season and what's coming up for you? We're, uh, we're extremely excited. Uh, the opportunities that we have this year are immense. Uh, it's great to be back on the field and play with uh, our brothers that we call. Uh, it's just awesome to be back out there and have that feeling that you're back on the field with everybody. Absolutely. You know, on the field lately, it has been hot. And on Friday night, I know it was sweltering hot as well. How do you guys deal with like this August heat and humidity, especially when you're in full pads? That's got to be tough, isn't it? Yeah, there are a couple things that coaches do. Um, the first thing is that they let us take our pads off if it's really, really hot. And the second is that they move practices early in the morning so that we're done before it really reaches that top temperature. And then as a player, obviously you can hydrate. That's a pretty obvious one. And you can also take ice baths and that helps get rid of the fatigue in your legs from the heat. 
That's lucky you gangs get to do that. Back in the day, they would put us through two days and would hold water <laughs> until the end of practice. I mean, yeah. It was absolutely nuts. Uh, so speaking of Friday night, it was hot. It was, there was rain. There was lightning in the area, all that kind of stuff. But you guys uh, started off hot. Big win uh, for you guys against Oregon. Uh, talk about that a little bit, if you could, and how that's going to propel you for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, Oregon was a great team, you know, and we they came out strong. I mean, they scored first play on us, and we had a lot of young players out there. We had seven uh, juniors on defense that were starting for the first time and seven on offense. So that was tough for us. Um, but as the game went on, we really got comfortable and there were a lot of times there were uh, really positive things going on with the team. Um, and there was, uh, yeah, it looked good. Yeah, absolutely. And there's always high expectations in Wanakee as well. You guys have set the bar pretty high. What are your expectations for this upcoming season? Uh, we're just going to try and improve each and every day and get better each week. That's something that our coaches have really tried to focus on because with uh, this last game, like Tyler said, there were some really great things and there were some not as great things. And we're just trying to improve each week and get better and hopefully work towards uh, work towards a Badger Conference Championship. Always good stuff. And you guys are expected to be there. And again, we're going to be there on Friday night against uh, you and MG. You know, before the game starts, so a lot of guys seem to have their superstitions and pregame rituals. <laughs> How about you guys? You got any of those? Uh, actually, we do a uh, team breakfast that we call our hog breakfast. It's where like our linemen, our hogs, organize a breakfast and uh, get the entire team to come. We usually do that every Friday morning. Obviously, guys listen to their own pregame playlist or music. And uh, also, some of our guys go and get food from certain places, whether it's a Subway or Melio's. That's something that they kind of do as well. Whatever works for you, it seems to be working well. As always, congrats on a week one win. We'll see you on Friday night. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Brought to you by Conan Automotive, taking care of you by taking care of your family's car. All right, let's talk some boxing now. So we got a big show coming up here in Madison at the Align Energy Center. Supreme Hits Boxing presenting the coming of the storm. That is going to be Saturday night, September 24th. Again, over at the Align Energy Center as we bring in now, hey, the guys from Supreme Hits are going to be putting on that show as we got Maurice, Ricky, Deontay, Dorn all here. And gentlemen, welcome on into the show. And Maurice, if you could, tell us who you brought along here today. Well, I brought with me... Uh, Ricky, he's our new vice president of Supreme Hits Promotions. We have Deontay Boumaye, and we got Dorn the Storm, the WBF Super Featherweight World Champ. Excellent, and his fight the last time, absolutely amazing, and we'll get to that. First, let's ask you, Ricky, as we're looking ahead to Saturday night, the 24th of September, what can we expect from this uh, upcoming show? Well, you can expect an exciting fight. Um, it'll be an exciting night. Um, our fighters are going to come out and give it all they got, so you can expect a lot from us. Exciting night. Excellent. And talk about exciting. The last time that you guys were in Madison, Deontay Boumaier was fighting. The crowd's going wild. They're all chanting Boumaier. And Deontay, you finished it off with a knockout. It was absolutely amazing. What do you plan on coming up for your next fight? Uh, same thing. Uh, <laughs> another electrifying fight. Uh, of course, I want a knockout. Uh, I want to end in a knockout, of course. Uh, and just give the crowd you know, a great show. Yeah, and I'm sure you will. You always put on a good show. And speaking of putting on a show, Dorn the Storm, man, absolutely amazing. I was talking off air about how I know why they call you the Storm now as you just rained down punches during that fight. You made some history in Madison. You became the world, the super featherweight world champion. A lot of good stuff there, Dorn. How does it feel? Well, it feels great to be uh, the WBF uh, world champion and also an honor to be, re to be uh, representing the city of Madison here. Yeah, you know, not only did you like rewrite history, you became uh, a world champion with 10 fights or less, the first Hmong champion. You also threw 1,800 punches. How do you plan to stop, that, or actually to top that in your next fight? Well, to top it off, I'm gonna bring a lot more skills, more tendency, more excitement to this next fight, so. Uh, I'm sure you're going to bring the excitement. It was absolutely amazing to watch you in that last fight. And Maurice, you know, I got to tell you, Supreme Hits, you guys have really put yourselves on the map. Uh, you guys are now well-known, well-respected. Uh, tell me, as, as you guys continue to grow, what are some of your next steps? Well, uh, our next step, um, we're looking to put on some bigger, better fights as usual, uh, sign some, some more guys. We're looking for uh, local talent. But we're also bringing talent in uh, from internationally, 
um, around the country, signing them to the Supreme Hits promotional team. So we're looking to put together uh, something awesome for the people and for the fans. I'm sure it will be. I hope that everyone will check it out. Again, the coming of the storm, it is coming up Saturday night, September the 24th at the Align Energy Center. I'll be there. Hopefully you'll be there as well. Gentlemen, good luck with the rest of your training, and we'll see you on the 24th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. Welcome back to the Sports News, I'm Ellen Barrett. And we're continuing with the Olympics today with Nathan Adrian, who started swimming at the age of five, influenced by his siblings. Now the five-time gold medalist is in Rio, working on writing another chapter in his Olympic story. He joins us this morning live from Rio to talk about setting goals and making those goals a reality. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Nathan. Nathan, how are the Olympic Games going so far for you and Team USA? The Olympics was amazing. Uh, I mean, we, we started off great uh, in, in, the, in the pool. Uh, I think we actually ended off great in the pool too and then kind of handed it off to um, you know, the, the other sports that, uh, that end up bringing home the medal count for Team USA. Now you're part of a great program that allows you to mentor and inspire other people to set goals. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? So I've, I've partnered with City for a uh, program called Stand for Progress. And uh, what we're trying to do is, is encourage you know, kids, young adults, anybody really, to, uh, to use the hashtag Stand for Progress and share with us what your goals are. Um, I, th I think a really important part of my Olympic journey has been setting goals and, uh, and really, you know, setting big goals and then, and then using, using uh, small goals to help get progress along the way. Um, that way, as long as you're just getting better, um, you know, and, and you're, you're achieving progress. Now, what advice would you give young future Olympians about following their dreams? You know, that, that, feels, that feels great. I think, uh, you know, one of the things that, I, that swimming has done well is, is have a lot of athletes that are, that are willing to give back. So when I was a younger athlete, you know, I got to see what they were doing. Um, and, and now that I'm in this position now, I think it, uh, it was really important for me to find a way to give back. Nathan Adrian with the Rio Olympics, best of luck to you and thanks for being with us today. Brought to you by Conan Automotive, taking care of you by taking care of your family's car. All right, time for our show to rally here a little bit and serve up some tennis talk. Yeah, those are bad puns, I know. As we bring in right now, we got Mary, Jessica, Katrina, and Amaya. They're the captains over at Madison Memorial High School. And welcome on in, ladies. Thanks for being here. And let's talk about the tennis season that just got underway. How has the first week of the season gone so far for you, ladies? It's been really exciting. Um, we have our largest number yet, and it's great to see the incoming freshmen and all the new players show us just how amazing they are. It's great to see the vast difference between all the skill levels. Yeah, and you talk about having a large team and, you know, and so many players, about 80 players or more that are actually a part of this program, which is absolutely huge. So being captains on a team that's that big, what are your roles? How do you, how do, you do it? How do you be a part of that? Yeah, for sure. So it's really important that we're leaders both on and off the court. Um, so when we're on the court, we really need to be positive and encourage people. Um, when people are playing matches, sometimes they get really down on themselves and then their play starts going down. Um, so our role as captains is to encourage them and make them realize, like, you got it, girl. You definitely are going to win the next point um, when we're <laughs> off the court. Things that are important are just having like a good team feeling and making sure that um, we're really bonding. Since our team is so large, it's hard to meet all the players. Um, but with our social events, we really hope that people do get to know each other and form special relationships. Yeah, it seems like a great program and a great program to be a part of. And as far as playing tennis over at Memorial, what do you think is the best part of it? The best part is definitely just getting better as a player with your friends. All of us have improved a ton since freshman year and all of us had made really great friends from this. Excellent. And from a program that's so big and has so many people involved, what can we expect this year for Madison Memorial Tennis? I think our varsity team this year has the potential of making it to state. We have two incoming freshmen that are singles players and they have really improved our lineup. Uh, yesterday we were at the Dane County Invite and we won first place overall as a school. We had four first place wins at one dubs, two, three, and four singles. And our two, three, and two singles our two dubs, three dubs, and two singles won second place overall. So I'm really excited to see how well we can do this year. Yeah, that's great stuff. So how is it different though playing high school tennis and playing for Memorial than other times of the year when you play tennis? So for most people they play club tennis outside of the season and the vibes are the 
biggest difference. So at club tennis, it's definitely more relaxed and more focused on training. But when it comes to the season, the pressure is on and it's, there's a lot of pressure to do well, but we have the girls on the team to support us, which balances it all out. Excellent stuff. And everybody seems to model their game after a favorite player. What do you got for favorite players? Roger Federer. Ah, oh, my future husband. Nice. <laughs> he has taught us all what we can endure. He shows us that practice makes perfect and we can do any situation. He's pretty inspiring. My favorite player is Kvitova from the Czech Republic. She's a very powerful player and one of the most powerful women players I've ever seen. And she also just won bronze at the Olympics, so congrats to her. Good stuff. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Brought to you by Conan Automotive, taking care of you by taking care of your family's car. Well, hey, it's almost time to get back to school. It's also time for the football season to get started as well. Hey, there's a lot to cheer about, so why not bring in some cheerleaders from Stoughton Cheer as we have Amanda, Avery, and India. They are all joining us. And ladies, thanks for joining us. And let's talk about cheer. Uh, what sports do you girls end up cheering for? Um, I cheer for football and wrestling. Um, I just cheer for football. And I only cheer for basketball. Oh, really? Okay, so you all do like different sports. I thought everybody just did it all together. So, <laughs> okay, that's that's actually pretty interesting. So, talk about as far as cheerleaders go. Um, how do you think you know cheerleaders can best re represent basically their school and their teams? Um, I think the best way um, that I mean our squad does it is mainly just staying positive, um, kind of having that mentality of having younger people look up to you, so you kind of watch what you're doing, and that's basically it. Yeah, very important stuff. So that, that means you got to have some good characteristics. As far as characteristics go, what do you think are the three most important ones that a cheerleader needs to possess? Um, I think the first one is sportsmanship, being kind to the other teams, our football players, and our student sections, and other cheerleaders. The second one would be being positive because we're cheerleaders and spirit is a good thing. And being a leader for our school because we do wear SHS on our uniforms. So we need to represent in the uniform as well as outside the uniform. Yeah, a lot of that can be contagious and get everybody going. And so uh, as far as being contagious, getting that school spirit out there, name a couple of ways basically that you get the students, you know, wanting to be involved and being a part of the games. Well, the two like main ways that we get students to attend our sporting events is we put up locker signs in the hallways um, for the football players and the cheerleaders themselves. We also put up um, hallway signs for big events like um, big games for basketball and football and wrestling. And, um, and then the second way is we just have fun with it and we make the game really fun and make students want to be there. Yeah, fun's always good. You know, there's more than students so that are involved. Teachers, school administrators and staff, stuff like that. How do you get them involved? Um, kind of with teachers, it's a lot easier once you have like a teacher that you're really close with or a teacher that you kind of talk to on a daily basis, so I mean that makes it a little bit easier. Um, another thing with getting teachers, like she said, locker signs or like signs in the hallway, like if they see that and like they're talking about it in class, you can be like, hey, you can come support me at the game or um, come support the football players or any other team players that are playing. So. Yeah. Always exciting to get everybody involved, everybody cheering for the team down there in Stone. You guys got some good teams, so a lot to be proud of, a lot to be excited for. We'll be looking forward to that. Ladies, thanks for joining us here on the Sports News. Thank you. Thank you. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. Big thank you to all of our guests. A special thank you as well to our sponsors and, of course, Rick and all the boys over at the Red Zone on Regent Street and Conan Automotive in Stoughton for their continued support of sports here on Channel 57. Thank you for watching as well. We'll see you next time on the Sports News on Channel 57 Sports.